Hi, I'm Mr. Burke, and welcome back to my Introduction to Latin series. Today, I want to talk about the dative. Now, we've already talked about the fact that cases have uses. The nominative is used for the subject, the accusative for the direct object, and the ablative is used as the object of certain prepositions. I know there are terms to describe the various ways the ablative is used with prepositions, like place where and place from which, but for now, I don't want to focus on those. Today, we're going to talk about a use of the dative. Remember, the dative is often translated to blank or for blank, like puelai means to the girl or for the girl. So it can be helpful to start with an English sentence, like the sentence, the poets tell a story to the farmers. Notice that to the farmers. We know that would be translated in Latin with the dative case because of that preposition to. But what is it doing precisely? This is actually what we call the indirect object. Indirect object is a grammar term in both English and Latin. Let's contrast this with the accusative direct object. Roughly speaking, whereas the direct object receives the action of the verb, the indirect object receives the direct object. So in that sentence, the poets tell a story to the farmers. What do they tell? What receives the action of being told? Well, that's a story. So story is our direct object and will be translated with the accusative. But to whom do they tell it? Who receives the story? Well, that's the farmers. So farmers is our indirect object and will be translated with the dative. Another way this is sometimes said is that the indirect object is indirectly affected by the action of the verb. So the story is directly affected. It's the thing that is told. But the farmers are indirectly affected. They're not told. Something is told to them. They are influenced by the verb, but not directly. Let's see a few other examples. The girl gives water to the woman. To the woman is your dative indirect object. She receives the direct object, the water. The slave carries food to the master. To the master is the indirect object because he receives the food, which is your direct object. This can be tricky to get your head around, but what you need to know for now is the dative can be translated to blank or for blank, and that often it will be used as an indirect object, something that's indirectly affected by the action of a verb. I think it's worth noting that we can rearrange a sentence with the dative. So we can rearrange the poets tell a story to the farmers and say instead, the poets tell the farmers a story. The farmers is still an indirect object and it will still be translated with the dative, agriculis. But I know this confuses students. So when I translate the dative, I prefer to try to translate it with the preposition to or for. Again, put another way, the sentence, Poetae fabulam agricolis narrant can be translated, the poets tell a story to the farmers, or the poets tell the farmers a story. But just for the sake of this video series, I will always err on the side of the poets tell a story to the farmers. Because for the sake of this video series, I want you to hear that too, I want you to hear that for. And I encourage you, at least until you're familiar with how the dative works, to try to translate it using the words to and for. Thank you for joining me. Today we just learned one use of the dative, which is the indirect object. Until next time, wale!